I know is nobody's cooking salmon with the, any of these fires here. They might be worshiping it, but boy, oh boy, nobody in this movie has ever thought of the idea of grilling, sauteing, barbecuing. Ooh, sounds tasty. My guess is she's the matriarch of uh, the tribe. Well, kind of a shaman, too, you know, does it, basically in charge of magic and all control with the spirits and the Aurora Borealis game. Really? There's always an elder in the tribe that sort of takes care of the spiritual welfare. What, don't you know anything? Well, takes care of the spiritual welfare. I was good in science. Everyone right? in the tribe. You were? Yeah. Okay. Jeez, eh? he's been eating something bad. He's popped a few zits. His whole complexion went down the tubes, eh? She's got a two on her nose. Maybe that's the same stuff they used to paint the, on the cave walls before, eh? Yeah, it was. A, a finger paint. The Inuits invented finger paint. And then due to some, like, patent thing, they got ripped off. And they Ooh, didn't get look. Paid for it. I got one of those at a gift shop at Vancouver Airport, eh? What? That thing he's got, that little bear we wear around the neck. That's called an omelette. Not the kind of omelet that you eat for breakfast. He's getting a little preview of his fate here, right? Oh, jeez. Do you see what she just did to him? She oh. popped him one in the head. Well, you know, that's the shaman's job. They're also in charge of the comedy in the trial. A good slap in the face. You think so? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, look at him. That, wow. that looks like our bathroom, eh? <laughs> You know, I could have told you how many of those were left hand and how many right hand if I was Rain Man. Oh, that's a good. What? How about you pay attention when I talk so that we can do a commentary together? Otherwise, why do I need you here? It's true. There he is. <laughs> so he's making fun of him. Yeah. Because the omelet he got was a love omelet. No, because he's made, he's wearing something from a Vancouver airport gift shop around his neck. Really? Yeah, he's he's giving him all kinds of heat now about this whole love thing, eh? It's like what I do with you. He's making fun of me. Because he thinks he's an idiot. Which is what I think of you. Thank you very much. No, it's okay. Hey, you know what I just saw? There was something carved into that tree. Right there, hey, look at the face on the tree. Oh. See, folks, this is the merits of repeated viewings. You see things you never saw before. Someday I'm going to just... And too bad that shaman isn't there to pop him. Right? Oh, see? Oh, you see? There you go. It's, it's in the tribe, I told you. They all know that comedy stuff. Now, you know what I noticed there? The actual bite. They tastefully let it happen off screen. So you didn't see his butt bleed on camera. That's right. Just a reminder to you kids, don't back up to a dog. I saw that at uh, Calgary Airport. What? Gift shop. That eagle that he's got. Good thing we're at home. I don't think anybody in the movie theater would appreciate us talking this much. It's the beauty of home viewing, though. You can sit and you can watch. And you can enjoy. You can eat, you can drink, you can do whatever you want to do. Remember the first time we saw this movie in the theater? And those, those people turned around and said to you, Stop doing that commentary! <laughs> See? Remember we was telling you about how they basket falling down was a turning point in the movie? This is it, eh? A grim reminder to you folks. Don't treat your baskets of fish with disregard. And clean those rugs, eh? Fish lying around on the floor. It's just not good after a while, eh? Yeah. So, just to recap from a literary perspective... Go. The falling of the basket represents pathetic fallacy. 